On July 10th, we had a catastrophic flood that affected parts of the entire state. What I'd like to speak about today are a couple of things. One, where Vermont stands in the recovery, and two, to describe specifically damages to our agriculture community and our farming community. Uh, before I do start, I want to express my gratitude uh, to the Biden administration, uh, to the FEMA uh, folks who visited, to the Secretary of Transportation who's visited, uh, and to the staff at FEMA who have been working tirelessly to help Vermonters go through the very difficult process, folks who've lost their homes or suffered significant damage to their homes, folks who've lost their businesses. Uh, we saw when I was here originally photograph of Montpelier where the entire downtown district uh, was flooded and the individuals uh, in the farming community who've seen all of their work and all of their crops destroyed. Uh, Senator Sanders and Congresswoman Ballant and I uh, are working as closely as we possibly can with Governor Scott whose administration is totally dedicated to trying to help Vermonters recover. What did happen in Vermont affected homes, it affected infrastructure, it affected businesses, but it also affected the farming communities. And earlier this week, <clears throat> Governor Scott and I visited the farm of Paul Mazza in Essex Junction. Paul has been farming about 40 years since he was 11 years old. And the farmland that we see here along the river, you can see, has, riven up, has, has risen up so that it covered much of the acreage. The acreage included raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, crops that neighbors and Vermonters from all around look forward to coming to the Mazza farm and self-harvesting. And as Paul said, Paul Mazza said, to Governor Scott uh, and to me, the people of Essex and the people of Vermont need my farm, and my farm needs the people of Vermont. And of custom in Vermont was for folks with their families to go to the Mazza farm and do their own picking. And he has about 40 acres that are dedicated to those extraordinary crops. They've been destroyed. We walked that farm and saw the devastation. And when the flooded waters rose up above the crops and then receded, it left a residue which makes those crops, it destroys them. He also has almost 300 acres of corn, feed, feed corn, uh, and about 250 acres of that was destroyed as well. And what we understand is about 100 thousand acres of forest and cropland has been affected by the flood. About 10,000 of those acres are in direct agricultural activity. Vegetable crops from our small farmers whose work is only paid for at the end of the season when they harvest and sell those crops. Those crops are destroyed. So many of our smaller vegetable farmers who are so important to community life, so important to getting good nutritious food, those crops have been destroyed. And the question is whether those farmers are gonna be able to get back in business and we're gonna to need to be able to help them if that's gonna happen. I have a couple of things I'd like to say. One, to Vermonters and to Vermont farmers, report report, report. In order for us here in Washington to be able to make the case for the aid that we need and you need, we have to document what the damages are. And some folks in Vermont are hesitant to make that report thinking they might adversely affect their neighbor's ability to get aid. That's not the case. We need to document how much loss has been suffered by every Vermonter. So please, especially our farmers, but our homeowners, our businesses, report. Call 211 and let us know what the damage is where you live. And it could be anything from driveway damage to Paul Mazza's crop damage of a couple of hundred acres. Second, 
Senator Sanders and I will be asking at some point, when we know what that damage is, for the assistance of our colleagues to help out Vermonters who have been the victims of this natural disaster, this catastrophic flood that occurred 17 days ago. But before I finish, I want to express the inspiring response that Vermonters have had. You know, we're 17 days into this, and immediately after the flood, there was an outpouring of support from volunteers, other Vermonters, to come to help businesses that were flooded, to help homeowners that were flooded, and even and to help our farmers. People are going back to their lives, but Vermonters still want to help. And some of the stories that so inspired me, I'll give one. In Marshfield, there's an owner of a general store, Michelle Edelman McCormick. She thought she was running a country store. Well, on the day of the storm in Marshfield, it was absolutely devastating. She took in three dozen people who stayed at her store, and she sheltered them. And I just can't believe the generosity of this person to fellow Vermonters in need, taking three dozen people in, sleeping on the floor, doing whatever they could to get through the night and the next day. The damage was enormous. Marshfield, where the country store is, lost three bridges, and a fourth was severely damaged. The small town of Johnson, a sewer main was taken out when the line it was attached to, it was on the bottom of a bridge, was ripped away by a car that was floating down the river. And the wastewater treatment facility in Johnson was totally destroyed. It, it suffered eight feet of water in the plant itself. <clears throat> and across Vermont, we lost 33 wastewater treatment plants. In the small town of Cabot, famous for its Cabot uh, Agrimark cheese, every single road was damaged and people were stranded within the community because you couldn't get out and you couldn't get in. From Cambridge and Jeffersonville, these small towns were completely cut off during the flood. A senior low-income housing project was lost to the flood. So we are now in that stage where the initial trauma of that flood on July 10th is behind us, but the very hard work that is required to try to get that business back on its feet for that homeowner to find shelter, <clears throat> for that farmer, Paul Mazza, and his daughter, Katie, and the folks who work so hard on the Mazza farm. They have to do the day-by-day, step-by-step recovery because we want folks to be back in their homes, we want folks to be back on their farms, and we want folks to be back in their businesses. Vermonters are gonna do everything they possibly can and the governor's response, the legislative response is important. And there's public and private activity that's going on to help Vermonters get back on their feet. But we in the federal government have to do our part. Vermonters have always, always been there to help other parts of our country that have suffered natural disasters. That's through no fault of anyone's, but the folks who are on the receiving end in this case, a flood. In other cases, a hurricane. In other cases, a wildfire. We have to help each other. And Vermonters have always helped others. And my hope, and I'm confident, on the basis of the very supportive comments that my colleagues have made to Senator Sanders and to me, is that we'll get the help that we need for Vermonters. I'm inspired by how Vermonters have helped each other. And my hope is that we will help them get back fully recovered as soon as possible. Madam President, I yield the balance of my time.